Today, I'm gonna take this picture of my sweet little dog, put it in a pixelating program, and convert it to pixels. Then I'm gonna cut out 2,110 9 16 by 9 16 squares of wood out of nine different species, 25 different colors. Then I'm gonna glue them on a Baltic birch background that's 32 inches wide by 48 inches tall and recreate this picture. It sounds pretty easy to me. Let's get started. This is a picture of my sweet little dog, Maddie. And this is the same picture after my brother digitally erased the background. And this is the same picture after I put it in a program called Pixel Stitch. Pixel Stitch is an online program that's free to use where you can take any digital picture and convert it to pixels. Most people do this so they can make cross stitch patterns. I'm doing it so I can make a wood pattern. The way this works is you upload your picture, you tell it how many colors you want to use, how many squares wide your canvas is, and then it automatically calculates how many squares tall it is based on the picture dimensions. Then it gives you a printout showing you the location of each of those colors as well as a color list with numbers that correspond to cross stitch thread. Now, that part is not gonna help us, but we're gonna assign those colors to our wood pieces. Now, to come up with 25 different colors of wood, I had to get a little creative. I was able to locate nine different species of wood in the shop. Now, within each species, there's often some dramatic color differences. Whether it's heartwood or sapwood sometimes makes a big difference in the color. So what I did was I got 13 different color variations within those nine species. Now, that's still not enough. I need 25 colors. To get the other colors, what I did is I discovered if I clear coated them with lacquer, that darkened them. So now I've got that many more colors. So all except for the polonia, I did a clear coated version, which made it slightly darker, and I got my 25 colors right here. Now the next step is to assign each of those colors to this color key, and that's what I've done here. Now that we've figured out all the technical stuff, it's time to start making the wood pieces. Here I've taken my different species, and I'm ripping them to rough size on the table saw. Now sending them through the surface planer, I get them smooth, but I also get them all to the exact uniform size. That size ended up being 9 16 inch square. Now using my table saw sled, I'm cutting approximately one quarter inch thick pieces. It's not real fussy to get them exact, just as long as they're pretty close. I did this over about a five day period since I had over 2,100 of these to cut. Each night after work, I would come out and I would try to cut at least a species, maybe two species worth. This was very, very tedious and I had many, many hours in just cutting the squares. Now here they are divided up into the 13 basic color categories. We'll add the finish to them to get the darker versions as we go along. And here I've drawn out the symbols of each color and taped them to the cups. Now all cups except for the Polonia, which only has one color, have two symbols on it. One symbol represents the raw piece and one represents the piece with clear coat finish on it. And now it's time to build the canvas in which to glue our squares onto. We're using eighth inch Baltic birch because it's lightweight. And to stiffen it, we're gonna put stretchers behind it. The stretchers are made out of lightweight polonia. We're gonna assemble this by gluing and nailing the stretchers on the back of the Baltic birch. This is gonna give us a canvas not unlike an art canvas. 
except we have wood as our surface. Now we have to find the very center of our canvas. We're measuring and then using a T-square to make a center line both horizontally and vertically. We've clamped a straight edge along the horizontal center line. Now we find the very center of our drawing as well. We'll use this point to build down and out. Now here's the method that we use. We read our key, find out what symbol it is, pull the right species from the right cup based on that symbol. We give it a light sanding to get any of the little burrs off. And then we place it either on the top row or the bottom row, depending on whether it needs finish or not. We make sure to keep these in the correct order based on the key. Now the bottom row gets the finish, so we go ahead and spray it on now. And once we put a couple coats on and it dries for about a minute, we move it over to our canvas, making sure still to keep everything in the correct order. Then we take it off of our boards in the correct order and put it on our canvas and stage it. Once I get a couple rows, it's time to glue. We're just using a small brush and some carpenter's glue, and we're painting a light coat on our Baltic birch background. Now we've got a straight edge to start with, and we're making sure everything is tight against the straight edge. This is because we want our first few rows to be perfectly straight. Everything builds from this row down and this row up. So if we start off crooked, the whole thing's gonna be crooked. We're gonna remove this after a couple rows because we won't need it anymore. But to start, that's what we're doing. Now, every few rows, we're gonna check it with the T-square to make sure everything is still tracking perfectly straight. And then it's just a matter of repeating our processes of sanding and clear coating and staging and gluing. This gets very, very repetitive. In fact, after a while, I started to break down, sobbing uncontrollably. And at one point, I believe I hallucinated. I time-lapsed most of the bottom half and all of the top half, so I'm just going to let you watch as this thing comes together. It's very satisfying seeing especially the face come into view. Now we've got to paint the background black. Now the reason I didn't paint the board before I glued it on is because the glue is not going to stick to the paint very well. So instead we're going to have to mask off all of our work to make sure that we don't get any black paint on it. Now to do that I'm using blue painters tape with a combination of masking paper. And we got to make sure every joint is tight because we do not want any overspray to go underneath and get on our wood pieces that took us so long to assemble. I've chosen this semi-gloss black as our background color. Now we're just gonna apply it and keep our fingers crossed that we did a good masking job. 
And while the paint is still a bit tacky, we're going to go ahead and pull off all of our masking. As you can see, right up next to some of the tiles, there's some spots that didn't get covered with paint. These are very easy to remedy with a super fine tip black sharpie. We just color them in and they blend right in with the background. And here we have the finished product hanging on my kitchen wall. Up close, you can see all the different species and colors that make up the picture. From a close view, it looks very pixelated, which is the point. But as you pan out, the further away you get, the more into focus the picture comes. I just love this trick of the eye. Well, it's finally done, and I'm super pleased with the way it turned out. Even though at the end I was questioning my own existence and why I even started this project in the first place. It took so very long and was so very tedious to do this. I spent 38 and a half hours on this project. 24 of those hours were spent on gluing the tiles on the board. Now, I don't normally keep up with my hours in a project, but going into this one, I knew it was going to be a long one. So just for giggles, I decided to keep up with it. And that's what I came up with. But the end result is worth the effort. I wouldn't do it again, though. But I'm glad I did it the first time. And I'm glad you could come along and watch me. And I appreciate you joining me. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.